I think it's outrageous that people are exposed to chemicals that they don't know about. The issue here today is what's causing so much breast cancer. There's a gray area of, of whether man-made chemicals are bad for you or, or any worse for you than what already exists in nature. And in fact, there are many scientists who believe there is no connection between the environment and breast cancer. <laughs> We really need to do logical, rational investigations uh, that are adequately controlled. And what we need to use is the scientific method where you make observations, you correlate those observations uh, with other outcomes, you formulate a hypothesis, you test that hypothesis, and you come up with a theory. And the value of the theory is in its ability to predict the future. Every day, we have millions and millions of our cells actually experience mutations just because we live, because our body temperature is 98 degrees and we breathe oxygen. Then why do we get cancer so rarely? And that's because it's, you have the cell and its neighborhood. And if you put the cell in a good neighborhood, even if you're a little half cocked, you stay pretty good. But it's when that neighborhood changes that that cell decides uh, to be able to start walking about. It becomes cancer and uh, becomes like a drug dealer. And so the challenge for us in the future is to be able to make the neighborhood good and then the cancer will become much more normal. So we think of ionizing radiation as a carcinogen. We know that from the Hiroshima Nagasaki data that atomic bomb survivors have an increased risk of, of developing cancer over the course of their lifetimes. What we're interested in here is whether the radiation, how radiation is actually acting. And we have good uh, support that, that radiation can not only affect the target cells, the cells that will become cancer, but also this microenvironment, i.e. the neighborhood that Zena was just referring to. And that actually provides us a new perspective on radiation as a carcinogen because it allows us now to kind of interrupt the process, to think about actually preventing cancer through the microenvironment. There can sometimes be a disconnect between what scientific researchers are interested in pursuing scientifically, what questions they're interested in pursuing, and what questions the community is interested in having answered for their needs. One of the things that we do at the California Breast Cancer Research Program is to try to bridge that gap and have community groups and researchers together working to answer questions that are of interest to the community using the rigorous scientific methodology that scientists can bring to the table. One of those issues is the relationship between the environment and cancer. In the field of community participatory research, you're usually talking about interventions where something is being done to the community to change something. And here we're talking about basically uh, discovery science. So getting the community members to understand what we're trying to do as scientists and to translate that back to the community participants is a bit of a different challenge and one that we're really um, excited about. So this town hall is one of several ways that we have tried to do that. Fourteen countries and the European Union have already banned the use of phthalates for at least ten years now. Um, I think that really brought to light the fact that the United States um, is not doing enough, that we have become the dumping ground for a lot of the bad products here uh, that other countries, even Mexico and Canada, don't want, but yet we allow here and allow our babies to be exposed to all of these toxic chemicals. Some of these chemicals are useful uh, for, t for certain technologies, you know, cheap containers for, for beverages and foods. Uh, if, if we don't have these particular chemicals, we have to use something else. How do we know that the other thing that we're going to use is not going to be worse for us? I think, I think basically life is filled with the twists of, uh, of genes and, 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 and the quirks of our family backgrounds, which actually can influence things like when and if we get cancer. But to have uh, chemicals in the environment, uh, many of which we're not even aware of, possibly contributing to that condition, I think, is an insult to uh, people and to our health. To find out 
what exposures are relevant to an increased risk of breast cancer. We need to start very early in life. So this particular conference and this research project is looking at exposures in young girls before they reach puberty to see what's in their blood, what's in their urine, what they're eating, where they go to school and so forth, um, to find out later on, you know, which of these little girls will grow up to have breast cancer. Yeah, so there's a lot of issues um, faced by workers in uh, nail salons, uh, many uh, who are of uh, Vietnamese descent, are women who are recent immigrants, they are of reproductive age, and tend to be of low socioeconomic status. And the products that they use on a daily basis, um, eight to 10 hours a day, um, contain chemicals that are known to be cancer-causing um, and reproductively harmful. One of the reports that we have is called The Falling Age of Puberty in U.S. Girls. We now know that girls are reaching puberty much earlier. It used to be age 8, 9, 10, and now it's happening even before age 8. And girls are getting breasts a full two years earlier than they did 20 years ago. So something is going on, probably a lot of somethings are going on in the environment, in our culture, that's causing this to happen. And early puberty is a risk factor for breast cancer. All of us Americans, you out there, myself, uh, everybody else is, is, is loaded with the doses of, 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 of hazardous chemicals. We know that. We know that because our own Centers for Disease Control have tested numerous Americans across the country and have essentially concluded that all Americans have chemicals in their blood, many of which are very hazardous chemicals. So the question is, what do we do about that situation? Asian Health Services, um, which currently manages the collaborative, is in embarking on a, a breast cancer uh, community-based research participatory project with the Northern California Cancer Center. And it's looking to see whether or not there is an increased incidence of breast cancer among nail salon workers um, due to their exposures, to their chronic exposures to these chemicals. There are 80,000 different chemicals on the market, uh, yet the United States Product Safety Commission um, does not do uh, anything, um, in, in my opinion, or enough to actually protect uh, consumers, uh, do the testing, um, uh, do the research necessary. How has a, a economy comparable to that of the United States responded to the same evidence about uh, environmental health contributors to uh, illness? And uh, what I describe here in the book is basically how the EU has gone through a systematic analysis as to the potential dangers of chemicals in a whole array of consumer products and demanded they be removed. And that compares to the, to the situation in the United States when we, uh, faced with the same evidence, have actually done nothing. I vow that if I got to the State Assembly, I would continue uh, to pursue the uh, um, looking at toxic chemicals and what it does to our young babies. Um, 1108 is the result of that. It was a very tough fight. Uh, it seeks to ban the use of phthalates in baby products uh, to be used for children under three years old. And then when the research is completed, the community groups are just so much better than research scientists at getting the word out to the rest of the world and bringing that research to the attention of policymakers and being able to change pub public policy. Um, something that research scientists are always a little reticent to do. They want to be very objective and not show any partiality towards any, um, anything in the real world, really. Um, and um, so these, these partnerships are really important for advancing our knowledge and advancing the protection of public health in California. Uh, what you can do is, number one, be aware of this, because I think being aware of the actual hard evidence that's emerging about the, uh, about the, 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 the contribution of chemicals to health problems is, is step one. And um, secondly, to demand of your political leaders that they act on this information. And of course, you can make your own decisions as to what kind of products you want to buy uh, uh, in terms of that, are, that, that contain far less toxins than, 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 than others.